Hello and welcome to another tutorial. Uh, we are going to continue our discussion on uh, how to set up a default uh, compiler tool chain on different platforms. Uh, we looked at Mac OS and Linux and now let's look at the Windows. And we said that Windows is a little bit different because um, obviously Windows doesn't come by default with its uh, platform tool chain and by tool chain we mean the compiler that uh, people who develop the Windows, Microsoft, they also developed their own uh, compiler, which is called MSVC, Microsoft Visual Compiler. So you have to kind of go there and install it. And when you install it, uh, it basically, it's a very big application. It has a very nice ID, a lot of features built into that ID, but it also provides the, it also comes with the command line tools, which means you can just call the compiler in the terminal, in the command line in Windows and manually compile a CPP file. Obviously, Microsoft doesn't recommend that. So Microsoft recommends that you open up the MS Microsoft Visual Studio IDE and then uh, and then just use the IDE because IDE does a lot of stuff behind the scenes to make the compilation much easier. And uh, it's free. Uh, the community edition is free, so you can just download it um, and use it free of charge. And then uh, if you want to uh, basically uh, use the command line tools that come with the Microsoft Visual Studio, which is the compiler that is available on the terminal to compile a C++ application, you have to make sure that you add the, uh, the uh, corresponding directories that you need to add to the path environment variable in Windows. And we said that in Windows, the environment variables are, per, uh, are in between double percent. Uh, in macOS and Linux, they just start with dollar sign. And then uh, the problem is that with MSVC, there are a lot of directories that you have to add to the path. And uh, I believe when you install it, by default, it doesn't add them to the path environment variable. So this ends up uh, something that you have to manually do. Now, the, the good thing is that uh, they actually provide a shell executable script that you can just run in the terminal, in the command line in Windows. And that automatically appends a lot of stuff, all the necessary directories to the path. In the past, I've shown you how to append more directories to the path environment variable on Mac OS and Linux. Same story can be applied to Windows. Just know that in Windows, the path separator is semicolon instead of a colon. So in, uh, in Windows, uh, it's a semicolon, the path separator, right? So the path uh, separator is a semicolon instead of colon or so it's a dot and then a, a comma, right? Semicolon. So uh, in order to download the Visual Studio, you have to go to visualstudio.microsoft.com slash downloads and then uh, choose the obviously the community edition, which is free. And then uh, there you download the, a very uh, uh, small application, which is the actual installer. So it's not the actual application. It's an installer. You download it, and when you run it, it installs the installer uh, for Visual Studio, and then after that, it asks you which uh, components you want to install. So Visual Studio has a core, which is the ID, but then a lot of, let's say, plugins or components, a lot of uh, extra or additional uh, components that you can uh, install. And after that, it just goes uh, to Microsoft repository and downloads the files that need to be installed. So the this file that you download is a very small file because it's the installer. And then uh, uh, then uh, it, uh, after you select the items in the installer, then uh, it downloads the entire thing. So and that uh, big download is a like it takes a lot of time, right? It's a couple of gigabytes. And um, so the Bell tool in Windows, again, it's the Microsoft Visual Compiler. And then on the terminal, uh, once you add the proper directories after installing the MSVC, if you add the proper directories to the path environment variables, then the compiler, the name of the compiler or the executable is CL or CL.exe. We know that in Mac OS and Linux, uh, the executable files don't have any extension. In Windows, they have .exe, but in the terminal on the command line, it doesn't matter if you just name the uh, type the name or with or without the .exe extension. To the command line in Windows, it doesn't matter. So I recommend don't use the .exe, just type the CL. So CL is the command line, and you see the directory in Microsoft Visual Studio is called CLI, or command line interface, and CL is the command line or the compiler, right? So you pass the CPP file to the CL 
and then uh, you compile and again in Mac OS and uh, Linux usually we type G++ for example to use the to use the compiler or the tool chain in Windows you on the command line you type CL or CL.exe um, MSVC provides a scripts that can be easily run to set up all the necessary directories and these uh, scripts are very important I'm going to show you how to actually do it so you go to after you install the MSVC which I recommend uh, choose the default location for installation let's say your root directory is C and then program files Microsoft Visual Studio this is the version the year right I'm using 2022 community VC which is the visual compiler auxiliary so there is an auxiliary directory there and uh, which means this directory has some helper files or files that are helped just help you set up uh, the environment development environment and there is a build which means uh, this build folder has the files that help you set up the build environment very well and then uh, Microsoft uh, compiler allows you to select whether 32 bit or 64 bit compilation mode uh, I believe in Mac OS or Linux you don't have the option because they only come with a 64-bit version uh, at least I'm sure about Mac OS I'm not sure maybe there's also some uh, versions of the Linux that are still 32-bit but Mac OS is now fully 64-bit and then uh, after that these days they switch to the ARM architecture so it's a different story so here you can uh, select this file VC which means visual compiler VARS which means environment variables and then you say set it up for 64 bit right uh, the bat means it's a, a, a basically executable script for the command line so you kind of drag this file vcvars64.bat to the command line and hit enter it uh, runs uh, it executes and then uh, sets up the path environment variable correctly so this sets up the directories for the 64-bit Microsoft compiler to the path environment variable and after that you can type cl-version to check that the command line terminal can find the Microsoft compiler correctly or not. After that you are set that now the terminal is ready and it can, uh, the default tool chain uh, is correctly recognized by the terminal. And then we can just create a simple hello world.cpp and compile it and then uh, using the cl command and then hello world.cpp and then we can execute it all right now to show you uh, 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 again uh, after you run the vcvar64.bat so here i just drag the file here to the terminal and then hit enter it says visual studio 22 developer command prompt and then uh, environment initialize for x64 again if you want to compile in a 32-bit mode uh, you drag the vcvars32 if you want to compile in a 64-bit mode which is the default compilation these days you drag the vcvar64 and after everything is successful it says that uh, environment initialized for x64 and then after that you can create a hello world and compile and just to show you um, after you uh, uh, do this and if you look at the path environment variable in the terminal you see a lot of directories from microsoft visual studio have been added to the path a few directories from uh, the system uh, 32 for example windows kit dot uh, um, net uh, so and also some of the system 32 bit uh, kernel directories for compilation but you see i mean manually setting these up is very tedious right there are a lot of directories involved so let's head to uh, windows and i will actually show you how to do this so i've already installed the microsoft uh, microsoft visual studio but in general you go to um uh, let's see what was the name of the uh, directory so visual studio.microsoft.com slash download so let's copy this go to windows and uh, paste this here visual studio.microsoft.com downloads right and then you click on this community edition which is free and then uh, 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 basically download visual studio and uh, the file should pop up here yeah let's open the directory and i already downloaded this installer remember this is not the entire uh, uh, basically uh, installation file right this is only 1.6 megabytes so this is just a, a small size file which actually uh, is called the installer visual studio installer right so let's close this so this takes some time to set up and after that it shows you a interface a GUI that tells you 
uh, what you want to do like which items to select and after that it uh, goes and downloads those items and in installs the Microsoft Visual Studio and it takes a long time but uh, here I'm just going to show you um, uh, the steps so that you're familiar and here when this installer runs it already checks your operating system uh, to uh, see if a Visual Studio has been already installed let's say previously you've installed the uh, 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 basically uh, uh, other versions of uh, Visual Studio and now you have the option to upgrade the current version right <clears throat> so let's wait for this to bring up the installer and see uh, what happens and uh, what I'm going to do I'm going to also open a command prompt which is a, uh, a still comes with Windows there is a newer version of PowerShell which is a little bit different but for the sake of these tutorials I'm going to uh, work with the command prompt if I say <clears throat> cl hyphen hyphen version hyphen hyphen version and hit enter it's not going to recognize the command prompt and if I say echo percent path uh, okay, so this is blocking that. If I say path, you see none of the visual, uh, none of the visual studio directories are included. So we have to fix this, and the way we uh, fix this is by uh, running that uh, uh, basically uh, a shell a script or command prompt script. So it tells me that uh, you've already installed this Visual Studio Committee 2022. If you haven't installed it, then uh, you select it and you select uh, like C++ libraries or .NET frameworks, etc. And then it goes and downloads them and then install, uh, install them and it takes a long time. So it tells me that um, enterprise or professional editions are also available. Obviously, I'm just inter inter interested in the free version, which is the community. And there is an update available, but I'm not going to uh, do any updates, right? <clears throat> All right. So at the moment, uh, our terminal doesn't understand, uh, cannot find the default tool chain, which is MSVC. What we're going to do is we're going to open up a directory and then go to the root directory, which is our C directory, and then uh, program files, and then uh, Microsoft Visual Studio 2022 Community Edition, and then uh, VC, Visual Compiler, Auxiliary, and then Build. And here there is a, a script called uh, VC Wars 64. I'm going to drag it here and hit Enter. And this is going to execute this and append uh, uh, the correct directories to my path environment variables so that uh, uh, the terminal now can find the executable uh, uh, compiler which is cl hyphen hyphen version and now it says that uh, the terminal can find the c++ compiler for 64 bit compilation mode and then um, um, uh, so uh, you can also say for example uh, cl.exe in windows it doesn't matter right all right, so what we're going to do next is that now we're going to, I created this, uh, so let's go to desktop, desktop, and then this test directory. I've created this, and then here I'm going to create a text file called hello world.cpp. Just want to make sure that we can compile uh, hello uh, world.cpp. We're going to change the extension, and we accept that. And then uh, um, I'm going to basically open it with a text editor. Here we're just going to do a quick hello world. So we're going to say that include IO stream and then int main. We're not going to take any command line arguments at the moment. And then we're going to that we're going to say that stdc out um, hello world from C++ in uh, Windows. And then we push a end line character backslash n also right. And then we save this and now we're going to compile we say cl and then uh, uh, hello world.cpp hyphen out and name the output uh, file my app and then uh, uh, o has been deprecated and will be removed in future release but um, uh, let's see uh, c++ so yeah, I mean, the compilation uh, worked fine. It says uh, it gives us some warnings, but still it tells me that it created the uh, myapp.exe. So if we go back to this uh, um, 
test directory, you see we have this myapp.exe. And here's one of the main differences between executing an application in uh, uh, Windows versus Linux and Mac. In Windows, the current working directory is already added to the path environment variable. In Mac OS, so right now we have this my app hello world, right? And I can directly type it. If you have an executable in Mac OS or Linux, you have to tell it from the current working directory, execute my app.exe. But in Windows, you don't do that because dot or the current working directory is already added to the path environment variable, right? And the other thing is that just like Mac OS and Linux, you don't need to type the dot exe extension. By default, whenever you type the name of an application to the terminal or command line, it assumes that it's an executable. So if I hit enter here, um, it is still works fine. Hello world from C++ in Windows, all right? So you don't need to say dot forward slash uh, or backward slash my app because uh, the current working directory is already uh, appended to the path. That's only specific to Windows. In Mac OS and Linux, the current working directory is not appended to the path. That's why you always type dot forward slash the name of the executable. Now, if I echo the path environment variable again, you see that a lot, all the necessary uh, directories for the uh, CLI or command line interface of the Microsoft Visual Studio have been appended to the path environment variable. That's why we can just type the CL and it can find the C++ uh, compiler for the 64-bit mode, all right? Now, uh, the other thing that I want to point out, now let's try to uh, get some uh, uh, basically command line app, uh, arguments, which is the same idea in uh, Windows uh, compared to uh, Mac OS or Linux. So we say int argc and then uh, cat star or array of uh, strings argv, which is an array of uh, strings. And then we're going to the for uh, size t um, i equals zero, i less than uh, arc c, i plus plus. We're going to just uh, 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 push these command line arguments to the uh, uh, arg uh, to the console output, right? And then we also push a backslash n. So we save this. And then uh, we say CL and then uh, um, hello world.cpp hyphen o my app. And it creates the uh, uh, my app.exe, right? So if I say uh, my app or my app.exe, now it uh, also prints out. So we know that in C++, uh, the first argument it always is always the name of the app is uh, always the name of the application exactly the way you type it on the terminal so i can say my app uh, hello uh, um, how are you uh, doing right and it tells me my app hello how are you doing so we can successfully grab the uh, command line arguments in our C++ in Windows and later we will see that the same uh, applies to Java obviously Java is platform independent that's why uh, um, you are basically more familiar with the uh, Java applications in Windows. But uh, again, uh, the idea is that if I close this terminal and open it again, now I have to run that uh, uh, direct that file from the uh, VCVAR64 again. You just drag it and then hit enter to uh, set up the directories in the path environment variable again, right? So, I mean, you can go ahead and uh, uh, run this and then uh, uh, look at the path environment variable to see which directories are added. And I've already done this, so you can then go ahead and manually add this to your path environment variable, which is a little bit tedious, but you can do it so that you don't have to like every time uh, execute this so that uh, the path environment variable is set up correctly, right? So I hope you enjoyed this lecture and have a understanding on how to set up this uh, default tool chain which is the microsoft visual compiler for uh for the windows operating system please stay tuned and i'll see you in the next one